assalamu alaikum everyone today we are going to start very first lecture of this course which is microprocessor systems in interfacing so let's see uh, what we are going to study in this course so in this course uh, we will be covering two different sections uh, first section will be about microcontroller and uh, we are going to explore what is a microcontroller what are different aspects how different input output configuration can be made to any microcontroller and uh, how one can use interrupts so these are the terms which we are going to explore during this section and uh, you know that there are different kinds of microcontroller uh, which we can study so we will be choosing a case study as pic 18 f452 so this is a specific microcontroller that we are going to study in this uh, course while uh, this is basically manufactured by this uh, vendor microchip technology so microchip technology is a vendor uh, which actually uh, has manufactured pic 18 f452 pic 18 f452 is uh, one of the uh, basic uh, microcontroller 8-bit uh, microcontroller which one can understand uh, to understand all aspects of different microcontrollers uh, the second section we are going to cover in this course is about microprocessor and in that specific section we are going to see what is a microprocessor how it is different from a microcontroller these are two different questions which we are going to ask uh, and which we are going to answer in this course uh, so in this section again we are going to take an exact specific example and that is 8086 or 8088 microprocessor uh, so we will be exploring what is 8086 or 8088 microprocessor and it is manufactured by intel uh, corporation so uh, this is the manufacture of 8086 or 8088 microprocessor it's very well known so at this stage maybe you are thinking what is difference between microcontroller and microprocessor so uh, wait for a while we are going to answer these questions so very first topic which we are going to cover in this course is digital system what is a digital system uh, and how digital system is important for this course so what is a digital system digital systems are those systems which are designed to store process or communicate digital information right so whenever you see any system which is using any of these property uh, so you will call that system as a digital system so what a digital system does is basically process stores or communicates about what about digital information so uh, this is the basic definition of digital system and if we look around uh, we find we will find many examples uh, of digital system and digital system is the uh, base for this course okay uh, we can look at different applications of digital system which may include uh, process control process control is uh, uh, it's very important application of digital system or you can say application of microcontroller or microprocessor uh, for example a bottle fling plant which is controlled by digital systems so basically those uh, plants are now based upon what based upon a microcontroller or micro uh, processor so in this course we are going to see different applications or different projects and you can use uh, microcontroller or microprocessor to control that mechanism so the process control is an important application of digital system or in other words microcontroller or microprocessor another example which is communication system uh, if you look around in your surrounding you will find many communication system broadcasting systems televisions even your cellular phones those are basically based upon what microprocessors or microcontrollers or in other words digital system so this this is very unique and very important application of digital system third thing you can call digital instruments there are variety of application but i'm choosing only selected which are very common for example you look at variety of instruments which are digital and they are measuring uh, various things in our surrounding for example temperature measurement weight management uh, uh, weight measurement 
uh, height measurement and so on so the such is instruments which are highly accurate but they are basically based upon what digital digital systems or microprocessor or microcontroller uh, another application which is very common and very uh, uh, useful uh, is domestic products or consumer products for example your refrigerators washing machines in your homes are basically example of what are applications of what applications of digital systems applications of microprocessors applications of microcontrollers so in each of these devices we have dedicated microcontrollers or microprocessors which are controlling their overall mechanism so there are variety of applications you, which you can find and i'm choosing just few of them Okay, as I told you, this is very introductory lecture of this course and we are trying to develop some basic understanding and we are trying to recall some of the basic facts which we already know. So this is one of the fact which we already know and we are trying to explore that fact is computer and computers basic building block. So basic building block of computer, if anyone asks, you know that there are three things which you need, you need to mention it. That is CPU, memory or input output. So these are three different and important and integral part of computer which make it useful and uh, fully functional for all of us, right? So this is very basic and very important for this course base, right? Uh, so whenever you imagine a system or a computer, uh, it's basically function is uh, must be there must be some subsystems which we can recall them as CPU a central processing unit, memory, uh, and input output. And how these are important for us, we are going to explore it. Okay, here we are going to see two different terms and two important terms which is important in our codes, which are hardware and software, and we are going to compare them. So computer hardware uh, includes what? CPU, memory chips, IO devices, not bolts and so on what are these these are hardware which makes up your computer which makes up your computer systems right but uh, why these are uh, uh, how these are useful because they are performing certain tasks for you and why these why this specific computer hardware is performing that task because somebody has written a program in its memory to perform that task right so what is a program itself program can be used to perform certain tasks. It's kind of uh, uh, instruction which a programmer defined for hardware. So programs always use your hardware, but it is a set of instructions which is used to perform certain tasks using your computer hardware. So your computer hardware is nothing if you do not program it properly. If you want to program it properly, you need programs. You need a programmer who will be programming your computer hardware, right? So every time you perform a task using your computer, you are basically using certain programs, certain built-in programs. So programs, uh, can't, can we touch your programs? No, you can't touch your programs. Those are basically software, software of your computer systems. So computer hardware is including what? CPU, memory chips, IO devices, but those are physical things. But those physical things uh, doesn't make up everything for you. Basically, they need some software things, which are programs, which will be defining certain tasks and certain roles for uh, those hardwares. And those are uh, basically your programs. And programs can rewrite, programmers can rewrite the programs to change the task. So even uh, the hardware is same, right? Hardware is same, but you are still exploring uh, the same hardware. But if you change the programs, if you change the instructions, same hardware will be uh, performing this different kind of task for you so that means a programmer is very important person and he can change the function of same hardware same hardware using that software so that is the contrast between software and hardware but program doesn't programmers doesn't uh, change programmer doesn't need to change the hardware he has to change the programs he has changed he has to change the instructions which he has written for the hardware so he's just changing the instructions and hardware is changing it the okay now we have come to these two terms which we have initially started microprocessor or microcontroller so now we are starting our journey 
uh, where we will be exploring the terms microprocessors and microcontroller. So that is why I just name it microprocessor to microcontroller. It's a journey and where it starts, it starts from CPU. CPU is nothing but a simple chip and that is basically in simple terms microprocessor. So central processing unit of your computer is nothing but a simple microprocessor, right? And it is a simple chip, why? And that is why it is called microprocessor, a microprocessor, a very small chip, right? That is why it is known as microprocessor. But your central processing unit and microprocessor, these are so synonymous terms and these are uh, same uh, name, uh, two different names for the same thing, right? But CPU doesn't work independently. That's a very, very unique and uh, what do you say, a very important fact about CPU. CPU doesn't work independently. It doesn't work uh, without uh, uh, standalone, right? Uh, so he, he, it requires certain hardware to work with, right? Like other peripherals, for example, memory, IO devices, for example, your system needs mouse, your system needs keyboard, your system needs output screen to uh, put uh, to put it to put at the display, right? So all these things are needed, and then your computer works perfectly fine. So CPU doesn't work independently; it requires certain peripherals like memory and I/O devices. And here we come to the microcontroller evolution terms, right? Uh, so designers of microprocessor chip think okay why can't we put everything inside one single chip and then that single chip will be uh, uh, applicable or fully functional and doesn't require any other thing uh, that is the idea of microcontroller so when you put everything inside that chip like memory io devices sorry not devices but io ports and uh, some other stuff which is needed to uh, perform certain tasks for example in memory you need rom you need ram what are these two uh, different memories we are going to explore in this course again but uh, all these things are put inside one single chip and that single chip is known as microcontroller right so single chip and that is why it is called single chip system so you know that it includes cpu that means processor memory, IO ports, AD conversion means analog to digital conversion or timers or itself other peripherals all those are included in one single chip and that is called microcontroller right so whenever you call CPU CPU is a chip on a system right CPU itself is not a system CPU is simple chip or microprocessor is simple chip which is placed on a system but microcontroller is a fully functional system in which cpu resides or microprocessor resides right so uh, it's a very simple term chip on a system is basically microprocessor while system on a single chip is known as microcontroller i hope this point is clear and we are going to explore this point again further because this is the important uh, aspect and very important uh, concept of this course well pick microcontroller is one of the basic example of microcontroller that we are going to discuss uh, there are various microcontroller uh, vendors and there are various products from those vendors we are going to see those things but it's specific in this course we are going to study about pick microcontroller So here we come to the picture where we can actually differentiate between microcontroller and microprocessor. So if you look at this left side uh, diagram, it includes CPU. It has certain RAM, ROM, IO ports, timers, serial ports. So and all these are basically uh, attached to what? Attached to this CPU, right? So this CPU requires all these terms and all these different terminologies are attached to make it a processor system microprocessor system or general purpose microprocessor system so uh, whenever we just say microprocessor it doesn't have these peripherals inside it it requires it if you want to make a functional microprocessor you have to add these peripherals or these devices to with it right by while if we look at on the right side diagram 
it is basically a microcontroller and what is a microcontroller you can see everything is available inside that chip cpu right it is your cpu that is your processor ram rom serial port timers io port and all these terms are integrated in one single chip that is your microcontroller so this is a very key difference and the diagram di diagram difference which you can see in these diagrams i hope you understand the clear difference between microcontroller and microprocessor okay here we are going to enlist some of the facts about microcontroller and microprocessors so general purpose microprocessor uh, it must be added with ram io devices rom and other peripherals this is one of the fact that we have already explored so it requires these peripherals to work properly to make them fully function that what my meaning is uh, bulkier uh, of course if you add so much to this microprocessor it will definitely become bulkier it will become expensive because it requires so many other items to make it fully functional advantage of versatility because you will have option to uh, go for uh, installation of your required RAM size size of RAM uh, your required uh, IO devices uh, you have so many functions uh, uh, you many you have so many options available but uh, this uh, this thing is coming uh, on the expense of cost right but if you look at microcontroller they have CPUs or processor with additional RAM, ROM, IO ports and timers on a single chip, right? And all those are embedded on a single chip. That means this is the uh, advantage. Everything is coming in a single pack. But what is the disadvantage? You don't, ha you don't have capability to increase the RAM or ROM size. You, uh, you have a limited amount of RAM or ROM, so it's a fixed amount which is available on this single chip but it is cost effective you do not need to buy anything else right it will work so you just need to plug in the power and everything will be fully functional you just need to program it but for a microprocessor you need uh, so many other items to make it fully functional okay here we come to an important term or another, another important term of this course which is embedded system so what is an embedded system embedded system is a system which is controlled by its own internal microprocessor or in other words microcontroller as opposed to the external controller any system which has internal microcontroller of its own self or uh, internal microprocessor available within a system is known as embedded system it is designed for any specific application in a typical embedded system uh, a single microcontroller's rom or the memory is burned with a program right uh, uh, there is a program for a specific func specific functions uh, is written down in the memory or in the rom of the microcontroller and that specific function cannot be changed so that microcontroller will be performing certain specific tasks so that is basically the part of embedded system and that program will be written according to the need of embedded system for example it's a printer right what it does its internal processor just performs one function what is it it collects the data from input port and prints it down on the paper through the output port right so what is the function of printer it has an internal microcontroller in which memory or in in which uh, ROM uh, programmer has written down a program and that program is basically guiding that microcontroller to process the printer for only one function what it does it takes it collects the data from the input port uh, and then it prints it down on the paper through the output port that means that specific task is written down or burned within the ROM of microcontroller which is installed inside the printer so printer is an embedded system right which is designed uh, for a dedicated purpose that is why it is called embedded system uh, and in that system has its internal processor that we can call microcontroller as well right so embedded system doesn't require any external microcontroller or any external uh, processor because it has its own processor which has its program written down so it has its hardware and the software is written down in that hardware right so uh, it doesn't require any other uh, important 
any other external guidance so printer know what it, what it has to do uh, it has to just collect the data and has to print down uh, the paper right and that is the example of embedded system so that is the meaning of embedded system whenever uh, a, dedica a dedicated application is written down in a microcontroller uh, ROM and it is connected with all other peripheral which is required so that collection of things or that collection of items will be known as embedded system I hope this thing is clear okay at this stage one can ask what is difference between embedded system and microprocessor so in this slide we are going to cover that concept you know that in a general microprocessor system or in a general purpose microprocessor there is a RAM which can load many application it is example of your own computer systems or or your of, of your own laptops right so uh, in the RAM of laptop or in your personal computer there are so many applications which can be loaded and you can perform variety of tasks so number of softwares can be run simultaneously and each of them are working for different tasks right while in an embedded system ROM is burned with only one application or you can say only one software or you can say only one program for and that function is fixed you cannot change it right so with one software only and that is the function of embedded system so that is the difference between embedded system and microprocessor in microprocessor system or general purpose microprocessor system or in your personal computers uh, there can be number of applications or number of software which can be loaded inside the RAM and uh, number of softwares can be run smoothly but in embedded system there will be only one application or software or simple one program will be written down in the RAM. okay now we have come to uh, know about microcontrollers microprocessor what is an embedded system we know what are their differences but at this stage we know that there are variety of microcontrollers available and we need to make a choice we need to make a decision which one to be chosen right so uh, there are five major 8-bit microcontrollers since in this course we are going to explore 8-bit microcontrollers so i am just taking an example of 8-bit microcontrollers so there are five major microcontrollers uh, for example uh, free scale semiconductors which is also known as motorola uh, and their microcontroller is 68hc08 or 68hc11 so these are the microcontrollers right these are the specific microcontroller and it is given by uh, Motorola or Freescale semiconductor another choice is 8051 right and it is given by Intel's corporation it's again very famous uh, microcontroller AVR AVR is another important choice which you can make and it is from Atmel right or Atmega which is very common in used commonly used in Arduino systems right Another important uh, microcontroller which is famous an 8-bit microcontroller that is Z8 and that is from Zlog. So Zlog is your vendor and uh, Z8 is the product, right? And we come to another microcontroller controller which is famous and 8-bit microcontroller. It is PIC peripheral. Uh, we are going to see it what is PIC but uh, PIC is another important controller and it is given by the vendor microchip technology as I told you in our dear slides as well. So uh, there are different controllers and each of them is incompatible to each other means if you program one controller uh, if you write down some program for one of the controller for one of the microcontroller it will be incompatible to another microcontroller so uh, they, there has to be some choice you have to make if you are going to write a program for PIC it, it will never work in Intel 8051 if you are going to write program for AVR it will not work in uh, Z8, logs Z8 right so that means each of them is incompatible and here we have to make a choice so there are other 16-bit and 32-bit microcontrollers available from various chip manufacturers like I have mentioned here but the question is again which one should be chosen how we can choose this microcontroller or which one of them should be chosen for our course so we are going to explore this question again so as I discussed we need to make a choice so here we need to make a criteria on which we can make that choice so very first criteria is that meeting the computational need of the task whatever the task we want to perform using microcontroller that task must be uh, uh, that task needs must be metered uh, with the microcontroller and that task must be done in efficiently and cost effectively so these are the 
Uh, this is the very first criteria which you need to take in consideration that whether this microcontroller can do your task efficiently and cost effectively or not. If the microcontroller of choice can perform this task, okay, then first criteria is met. Okay, the second criteria is availability of software and hardware tools, right? There are variety of debuggers and variety of programmers, assemblers, uh, linkers. These are the terms which you're gonna see in this course, right? These are the softwares and hardware tools which are available for microcontrollers. So we need to make a choice uh, whether this uh, software and hardware tool is frequently available uh, and freely available and their service or customer uh, their help support is working very well for uh, us or not so this is another question that we need to take in consideration right as i told you compilers debuggers programmers emulators these are the terms that, that we're going to see in this course frequently so these are the hardware and software tools for different microcontroller the third and important uh, criteria for microcontroller to make a controller show chosen uh, we need we, we we need to have uh, the wide availability and reliable sources of microcontroller means microcontroller if we are going to choose it that must be available everywhere and their sources must be reliable I mean you cannot choose a microcontroller uh, which is not available locally easily for us so we have to make a choice uh, uh, for a microcontroller which is widely available for us so that we can uh, frequently find it and program it according to our needs so these are three different criterions which one need to fulfill um, uh, again if we repeat first thing we need to see if your microcontroller is able to do your, do your task efficiently and cost effectively I mean for both respectively efficiently that means it has proper amount of RAM ROM available in it and if we see cost effectively whether its price is not very high or it's very low so that has to that has to be chosen second thing debuggers and programmers emulator all those software and hardware tools which are related to your microcontroller are these really frequently available or freely available for you so this is another important criteria and a third criteria and which is important that whether this microcontroller that you are going to choose uh, for this course is it really available uh, widely or freely so uh, or its source is reliable so that these are three points which you need to take in consideration when you are making the choice for microcontroller and that we have already made for you for in this course uh, we are going to see pick 18 f452 and which actually performs or meets the three different criteria uh, accord, uh, according to the need of this course uh, the uh, pick 18 f452 or pick 18 family actually meet the criteria that's why we are choosing pick 18 f452 uh, for our course okay that's it from this lecture uh, in this lecture we tried to learn the different terminologies and terms involved in, in this course like microprocessor microcontroller embedded system and what are the related stuff uh, how different microcontrollers are chosen uh, what are different available choices right and other basic stuff and so that's uh, it from this uh, introductory lecture uh, if you have any questions you can post in the comment section and uh, we can we gonna answer it accordingly so thank you so much for listening